Hello everybody, welcome to this new tutorial which is dedicated to the settings of the software RQDA. So we'll see how to use the settings in order to uh, customize our application. So basically this is RQDA and on this example I will just open a new uh, project. First I will just uh, search about the path. So I will just take that one and I open this project. So whatever, I just open one project and I click on OK. Um, and now what we have to do is just to go on settings. And here we can see the different uh, customization that we are able to do. Um, first one, what you have to know is that uh, we can see that there is uh, many settings here. So we are thinking that the first setting is beginning here, but actually it's not true. The first setting is this one. This is actually a button. So if you click on here, a new window will op open. And here, if you click here, you can choose between the font family, the style and the size of the font. So I will just show you that one. Uh, for instance, uh, by default, uh, if I'm going uh, to open that one, you can see that this is uh, working like this. So you can see that the font is quite small. And now if you think that is too small, just go here and uh, just go here and let's make it quite big like this 32, just for an example, and then just press on OK. And every time when you finish to, when you change something, do not forget to save by pressing OK. So this is quite important because maybe it won't work. So don't forget to press OK. And then I will just open a file. And here the windows open and we can see that the font size changed to 32, which is actually quite big. So I don't really like it. Uh, I will just put something uh, smaller and OK. OK and press OK to save. So basically, if you are not happy with the font, the size or the font family, just change it. After you have two uh, text choice. So this is related to the name of the coder. So actually, uh, if you are working alone uh, on the folder, this is not really useful, but you even still can change the name. So you can just write your, your name. Uh, um, and once again, if your name has got some accents, such as, I don't know, uh, Frédéric, you should, uh, I would recommend you to, to not choosing any accents. Um, it may work, but uh, personally speaking, as a general IT uh, uh, rule I prefer are uh, not choosing any accent, but basically just write your name if you want uh, Okay, and then to save once again press ok Do not forget to press ok because if you don't maybe it won't save so Do not forget to press ok if you choose the default settings so everything will come uh, at the default uh, settings so I will just try trying to press default and then you see that my name default change to default and if, if I go to set fonts I decided to choose 19 before so now it's again 11 so uh, if you press on default you have to remember that all the settings you you decided to choose are gone so be able uh, I, I mean take care all settings will be that you've changed manually would all go if you press on that button so uh, press it if you already know what you are doing. Okay, so now I'm pressing OK here to, to change my name. And now the file encoding. So by default, uh, it's a ASCII encoding. But if you don't like uh, ASCII encoding or if you need an other enco encoding, uh, I would rather suggest you to use the famous uh, UTF-8. So just write UTF-8 and then press OK. So what I would recommend you is that if you are working alone and on the same platform is just using the, the default encoding. So change nothing, but use the default encoding and try to import some files to write some text. And if it's working, it's okay like this. Don't change anything. But if you are working with many people, especially with people having different operating system, I'm especially thinking about Windows versus uh, Mac OS. So if you are working with uh, different uh, operating system and different people, you should really, uh, I recommend you to choose the UTF-8 uh, encoding 
because UTF-8 is a very good encoding for the characters and it's working uh, with almost all languages. So uh, basically just try a encoding and choose what you like. Um, okay, and now I've got some couple of more uh, settings here. The color for coding is blue. I will explain you. If I'm, uh, let's take, uh, let's open an interview. As you can see, if I press here on each coding, it will highlight in blue color. As you can see, blue, 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 etc., etc. If I don't like blue, I'm just changing here. I can change to a lot of other colors, as you can see. Let's choose chocolate number four. I don't know what it is, but I will press OK. And then I will open this one. And you can see that the blue has been changed to chocolate number four. So this chocolate number four color. And you can customize the color if you'd like to. Um, I will not go much more into details about case. Basically, you have the case color. Uh, you, have, you have a color for the codings and the same one for the case. Though. So case is actually here. But actually, it's doing exactly the same. So uh, by default, the case color are, are golden. If you don't like it, just change a color. And if you change a color, don't for forget to press OK once again. We'll go much more into details in the other video to tell you uh, what is actually the case, uh, the case menu. For what do we need to use that? Actually, you have got a current uh, coding table. So you have the choice between coding and coding two. So basically, uh, I would recommend you not to change anything and to use coding uh, table. Uh, but if you wish, you can use uh, the coding table number two. Um, so what's the difference is that, that actually you have to, to know that RQDI software, each files which finish with .RQDA is actually a database and to be more precise, a SQLite database. And uh, each coding you are doing, so remember codings, it's like a highlighting. So here I've got all my highlighting, uh, can be placed into a, into two coding table. So by default, it will be in coding table one, but it can also go on coding table two. So if you are working on a simple project, I may recommend you to, to put it on coding. But I would give you an example. If, for instance, you are doing a analyze about uh, a speech of uh, many famous people, such as presidents or, or famous people, for instance. So you may create uh, you, you may create all codings related to what the people are saying uh, under the, the coding table number one. So uh, about each topic, I don't know if a president is talking about economic recession. So you make a coding economic recession and so on and so on. So you make normal coding like that and you may create a coding to about all the grammatical stuff. For instance, you may create a verbs, adverbs, and so on. And you may do two different analysis. So a first analysis related on what the people are saying, and the second one related to the accordings. So to the accordings, that to say to, to the grammatical stuff, for instance. So if you are working uh, on two kind of very distinct analysis, I would recommend you to, to use uh, two codings. So for instance, um, uh, if you, I mean, if you do a simple analysis, just do nothing, just change nothing. But if you do a kind of two coding analysis, so just when you, for instance, when you create a new, new code, so I would recommend you just, we will see that I, new code. And this is like related to grammatical, I'm just writing something, you know, and, and after, if you really want that this code is uh, going into uh, the coding table number two, you choose coding number two and you choose okay. And then on the files, uh, uh, you would be able to code it. So, to, to code this new code you created uh, would, would be coded into table number two. So everything you will code right now will be placed on coding table number two. But this is kind of, uh, kind of an advanced features. So if you're new into RQDA 
and doesn't need to do such a kind of complicated uh, analysis, just one simple analysis, just go on codings and never change this. This is what I would highly recommend you, especially for, for, for the new users. Here you can just, as the code tell you, to, to order by marks, to byte all the marks, so to f about the bytes. Uh, personally speaking, I never put it on true because I don't need it, but if you want to change the order, just write true and then it will change it. But I don't know why, uh, personally speaking, I really don't need to do that. So here you can show on this one the file's property. So that's to say that by default it's writing false, but let's put it on true and write OK. And you will see that if I open any um, files, uh, so let's open uh, this one. Uh, so here you can see that two windows are opening at the same time. And this is just the files property window, which is telling you that uh, this interview number three has got the ID number three. And this is placed into the categories about, uh, this is placed into different categories, such as home, view, and uh, Switzerland. So later I will explain you what is the categories. And uh, if you, if you, if you decide to, to put the settings on true, you can you can have many information. And as you can see here, there is no case about this uh, this this file. But personally speaking, I find it quite annoying. Every time when I'm opening a new window, there is there, there is that file's property. So if you don't like it, just let it on false and press OK to save it. This is the last setting that we can choose. And basically, when we do retrievals, um, we can choose between unconditional or only about cases or only about files categories or both, that's to say, case and files categories. Uh, this is quite a nice, um, nice feature. But I will explain it later, so I will go on, on that settings menu later to explain you for what do we need to use that. And I will use it, I, I will talk about it later, especially when we will speak about code retrievals, uh, advanced code retrievals. So I invite you to, to check the other video to see for what uh, can we use that kind of option here. Okay, so that was all. I hope that you enjoyed the videos. Do not hesitate to leave any comments or, or even to send me an email at this address here. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and see you on the other video.